So to, to the gentleman who's speaking about game cloning, um, isn't there, there's a third option which is survival of the fittest, surely, which is cloning happens, if it happens, the public will choose what they like, some variations will prosper, some will die out. Is that a viable way to go forward for the industry? You're partly right, but uh, in survival of the fittest, uh, who survives depends on the environment. So you need to decide what kind of people you want them to survive. So you should also shape the environment where the kind of companies, kind of games that survive are beneficial to all. So when you say you, who you Game developers, people who play games, people who, have, who are stakeholders in, in this uh, game industry, players, game developers. So they should uh, push towards an environment where only those players survive who are beneficial to all these people. Because the environment itself can be skewed in a way that uh, bad elements survive. So you have to take that. I didn't quite get the question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he was asking that uh, shouldn't we just let the market decide uh, who is. But I think it does. I mean, the market does decide who yeah, survives. Yeah. That's, that's why every person survives. Yeah, but that's what I was saying. I mean, like, do we need to include references? Do we need to open or expose so, 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 so I was saying that you also need to create that environment where very desirable entities survive. Question for Kala. We're getting the game coding as well. Um, the idea of giving references is actually quite counterintuitive, I find it. Because people it's look at it, it's counterintuitive. Yeah. Okay. So it's like uh, if you are giving references, to, uh, let's say, I have this idea from game A, I have this idea from game B. Wouldn't people who have played both games think that, hey, I think I've played this game before, so there's no point for me to try out this new game. So, for uh, example, I don't like this particular feature in game B, so you're including that, I wouldn't want to try it. So why would I put two references that will decrease my record? <coughs> Basically, you don't have to say that, okay, I took mechanics from the game. You don't have to say it like that. You just need to say that, okay, I, I got inspired from these, these things. So this might actually increase your market. If somebody likes a particular game and, and he sees that you are inspired by that game, but you also added some more new mechanics, then check it out. How it so you don't have to say that exactly which mechanic you copy, because you might not even be copying a mechanics. You can be just getting inspired by the game. Uh, for, uh, about the the crediting the games. So, uh, do, what do you think is the suitable time to put it, like in your like in uh in the very start of the game or at the credit scenes of the game? Or I would I would uh, say that uh, just like in the papers, right? We put it at the end. So, at the credits, you can say that we will drop it. There's a similar discussion in the book publishing world about people having three copies of stuff and stories being merged and plots being merged. Um, and there's a, a Canadian author called Cory Dutro who argues that most, for most authors the problem isn't private, uh, it, isn't, um, it isn't piracy, it's obscurity. Yes. Um, I, you know, I've heard of Angry Birds, I don't play it because I have a life. But I've never, heard of, I've never killed a castle or whatever it was. Crush it. Crush it. Crush it. Crush it. Crush it. So it was, their, that problem wasn't that Angry Birds did a similar game. It was because I've never heard of it. But now you might actually go and play it. <laughs> now you have, because of Angry Birds, now you know crazy. Me, me, me. So, so you're saying. So I'm saying that. They seem, they seem to be trying to solve the wrong problem. With the back, with the ludography. Yeah. Well, or with the cloning. Wouldn't, wouldn't the, uh, the energy that people are trying to put into stopping the cloning happen, which is never going to stop, yeah. surely that energy would be better spent on promoting and widening their own audience? Most people don't. I mean, look, 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 look at iOS, iTunes, use, and nobody's stopping the cloning. Unless you want to make a show of it that, hey, they clone my game, so people will say, whose games have they done? So you can actually latch on to some famous game and say that. I think people are going against IP. So for example, yeah. like, if I make a Mickey Mouse game, even like, you know, 
It's fine by Angry Birds, but instead of a bird, you're showing Mickey Mouse. You can't do that. You can use a mouse, but not Mickey. So they wreck that, not the. Generally, the only people who benefit as more ID are lawyers. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't necessarily help. And, 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 okay. and you don't want those things to transfer to the industries. Yes, Walter. I have a question for you. Um, cool. Nice <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <I have> question. <laughs> I usually uh, give um, uh, presentations that are super technical, so you try and explain like, a certain technology or a certain product, how it works. How do you? <laughs> like, wrap that in a story. Yeah, uh, try a metaphor is the best way to think about it. So give me an example of something really technical. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Excuse me. Yeah. 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 In database servers, so how you set up uh, a database server in such a way that you can actually fail over to another server if the one, if the first one fails. Yeah, so it's a bit like when you're driving a car and you've, you've got a cut off um, when the uh, spark plugs aren't working. Yeah, it's more like yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> that sort of analogy if you can and then that way someone that can't talk my school because I have no idea what you just <laughs> can then relate to it just a little bit. But, but I think also the context of it, like who you're presenting to. Like obviously if you're presenting to a bunch of technical people you wouldn't say you know the car pick you do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah, make the context of it. Yeah. But I wonder if that diminishes the usefulness of my presentation because my mind is very uh, technical when it comes to, to designing these uh, uh, presentations. So I wonder if like, what I'm trying to convey is simply how this product works or how the technology works or what you exactly need to do in order to set this up. And I wonder uh, if in that case it's very useful to actually come up with a metaphor that takes away from the uh, the core thought that I'm trying to get across. You, you, you'll get feedback on that. If the metaphor lands in such a way that they make sense of it, then they're going to ask the questions about, well, what if the motor doesn't start? Yeah. That lets you know that they're thinking already about it. Because you can't assume the technical proficiency of the group yeah. presenting to so, so you've got to dump it down to the lowest. And then bring it up once you know if they've got it. Any more questions? Oh, the oh. black and white and featureless presentation that you just gave, the slides, yes. is it by design? Oh, <laughs> if, no, if, no, if it no. is, <laughs> if it is, what is the significance of it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's by design, like, ten, literally, I, I sent it to Wuhan. Work of art. Um, yeah, work of art. <laughs> no, I definitely would uh, move away from uh, bullet points and cut points sides of words on them. Because um, what's that saying? The picture is worth, worth, black and white. worth a thousand words. So use the images because that way people have different associations of what the images mean and it creates an emotional response. Yeah, that's, 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 that's my, my belief is that you shouldn't be giving a problem presentation unless you just have pictures from it. <laughs> Which words is what? <laughs> 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 Which words are you going to use? Black and white. Black and white. Look at SlideShare. You yeah. know SlideShare.com? Yeah. Yeah. Go to the best SlideShare on that and 100% and of them. Ah, uh, pictures with words of the picture. But I think the best presentation, and I think this is like the, uh, the, the holy grail of presentation, mm. like in TED, is to actually do it even without the slides. I think that's the best, slide, yeah. if you can yeah. activate your audience and get your message across, like what I'm doing right now, it's fine. So. <laughs> I'm making this up as I go along. I think, I think this is what we need to aspire towards. You know, and, and I think, and honestly, you don't get to do that. I, 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 I just muscled in. I had a, he got me yesterday, I had this whole script worked out, and then I was, I don't think I picked it up. Yeah, so, yeah. But, but yes, the slides, you need to be careful about doing them in the sense that you shouldn't make slides to a point where people can get your talk without even listening to you. Because I think a lot of time, the trend here that people just make the slides to a point where they're reading what, they wrote what they're saying on the slides, and that's, 
And the presentation is going to be slight, thing. it's got to be you. Yeah. Because nobody wants to come and see you do a karaoke. Okay. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah. 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 They don't make real slides. They will just give a short term emotion, mm. and you can start. Yeah. yeah. Another question on presentations, because we were just talking about slide share. I completely believe that a deck, a slide deck without the accompanying words, is useless. So I don't get slide share. <laughs> uh, I looked at a presentation. You haven't actually been there before. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So each slide has to have with it either a bunch of questions or an anecdote or a quote or something that's engaging about that slide. So and, and that's where slide share falls down. Having said that, look at the winners and they're the ones that tell the story with the picture and the words on the picture. Is it like you should upload the audio that goes in the slides? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, that's an idea. It's like fast webcam, a lot of webcam first time and say, oh, you know, you just share, share the slides of the presentation. Like, can you imagine I, I share Peter's slides? <laughs> They'll be like, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes more sense though, because yeah. we've been through the presentation uh, and having this. It's more like class notes, right? Yeah. That's it, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. right. That's how we're recording. Every text I quit for recording. Every. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll have. Any more questions? Oh, I've got a question. Who here is a WordPress whiz? Uh, who knows WordPress like the back of the head? Yeah, Rinda. Who doesn't work for Mind Up? <laughs> I put my numbers up there. We'll you get to that, Peter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> One last round. Anybody? Because otherwise, this is your chance to get access any, to these. Any of the speakers want? Any? Other than the WordPress hire, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the uh, designer hire, and Tala is looking for okay. no questions. <laughs> no questions? All right. That, yes. yes. What, uh, Peter, you were saying about uh, you know, talking about uh, sharing a tall tale story, right? Yeah. So basically, a tall tale means a story that's not necessarily real. Sorry, a tall tale. Oh, tall tale. Tall tale. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's saying that. Yeah, yeah. I've got to change that. Yeah, <laughs> tall tale is when it's not real. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so it, is it okay up. to <coughs> make up a story uh, just to get a point? Uh, but maybe it doesn't know. Yeah, but no. <laughs> so you were not a guy? I was a tour guide. And I did that, and that was all true. Because when it's a true story, it's easier. you get it. Yeah, right. But I have seen great presenters who tell fake stories. But the whole point of the tall tale is really more just about like elaborating on the truth and telling the story in a really elaborate way. You know, because we can be like, yeah, I was down to the story yesterday. Like some people's Facebook posts are like, I'm tying my shoes right now. And you're like, yeah, great, great, great job. And then you know, some people really elaborate on their experience. And it's, it's that that grabs your attention or it makes some impact, and that's really what I think. <laughs> Talk about time shoes. <laughs> 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 Can I just make a comment about yes. this game uh, stealing? Yes, I was just talking the other day with my friend, he made a bubble struggle game, but he, it also uh, he took idea from like 90s, from game from 90s. Yeah. But what happened, uh, one Iranian company uh, made an iPhone application and they didn't tell him. Of course, he found out later. Well, so, when, exactly the same. so what he did later, he, he just thought, like he spoke with the lawyers, they couldn't do anything because he was from Croatia, they're from Iran. So he called them and he, they arranged the business together. So now they're like sharing revenue. He's, they're making a, a internet or a game for him and it's his idea and <laughs> It's yeah. one of the That's a very really rare story. Yeah. Okay, calling once, calling twice. Close! Please give a round of applause for